Glad to have you with us here on the program today. I'm joined by financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are with the Retirement Education Foundation. We're so glad that you've joined us today. We've got a great program lined up for you. And throughout the show, we're going to tell you how you can sign up for Kirk and Michael's courses. These are taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. If you're ready to get started, you know that it's time to take action for your retirement. You can call today, 800 240 8981. And be sure to check out the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. Kirk, Michael, great to be back with you. I want to talk about, it's an old marketing strategy and it's known as KISS. It stands for Keep It Simple Stupid. You ever hear about this? Well, obviously we have because uh, KISS has been around a long time. (laughs) Um, And, you know, I think Michael's going to give some examples in other industries where we've seen KISS be particularly effective and the more complicated, sometimes better solutions, uh, not as effective from a marketing perspective. You, you have to appreciate the easier it is for someone to understand something and execute something, the easier it is for somebody to sell it, right? And you're more likely to buy the easiest solutions. Unfortunately, this keep it simple, stupid idea for retirement planning for many people gets us into trouble. And unfortunately, you're really fighting against the grain uh, because that is the solution the financial service industry is going to utilize is as simple as possible so that they can sell more people and and maintain that transactional business model that, you know, the the profitability is what they're focused on in, in, in this industry, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, people are hardwired to look for the easy solution, the the shortcuts, the easy outs. Uh, that's why we have the rules of thumbs that we've we talked about before. Uh, so, I mean, even companies like Vanguard, who pride themselves on being investor focused, investor friendly, just put out this big research piece talking about essentially they dressed up a rule of thumb and said just monitor the markets and reduce your spending percentages when the markets are down. <laughs> so they're supposed to be the investor-friendly approach to all this, and they're still doing rules of thumb for people. Yeah, I think the other part of this we're going to cover today is, Michael, is, in, and I just want to sort of summarize what, what we're going to cover today. Why the simple solutions may work for some retirees. You have to appreciate when, for the financial service industry who's talking to people that have very little saved for retirement to millions save for retirement, to try to come up with solutions individually, customized for everyone, can be very challenging. So they come up with simple solutions, this KISS mentality, that may work for the average retiree. And and, and, and I think it's important that we define what the average retiree is. The average retiree, the average baby boomer is going to retire with about $200,000 of investable assets. That's everything. That's all they have. I know for some that sounds like a lot. For others, I think they're surprised to hear that's the average. So coming up with a simple solution for a person that has saved $200,000 for retirement may work because there's not a lot of wealth to navigate and manage. It's pretty simple at that point. You've got $200,000. You've got your Social Security. You might be lucky enough to have a pension. and, and and, And it doesn't require a really complex plan. But for those people who have more resources than that, which is who listens to our shows, who attends the the, the foundation, the charities, education courses at the universities, the people that have resources need a more customized individual solution. And it requires more than just a simple solution that you're going to learn in a eight minute segment here on the radio show. It it takes some training and that's why we teach these eight hour classes to train you to understand how to construct your own customized solution for retirement planning. A lot of it's around income planning, but there's so many traps and mistakes people are making. We would encourage you to attend one of these eight hour courses. We're teaching them at all the major universities. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org. You can also register by calling. I'll give that phone number. It's 
81. So, Kirk, Michael, what can our listeners expect to take away from the show today? Well, I think one of the big messages that, that we're hoping you'll take away from today is, so what are the simple rules that they have been learning and hearing and being conditioned and why they aren't going to work for them? So I hope that they can identify some of these general rules that they think they're going to use or they're using, how that can be dangerous for them and how there's much more effective ways to plan for retirement. It may just take a little bit of education and a, a little investment of your, your time to train to get you the best outcomes. It's training. It's just like any athlete trains to be good at what they're going to do. All of you in your careers, Michael, right? Everyone in their careers went to school. They had some sort of training program at, at work. So to invest seven, eight hours in a course to educate, to train yourself to better understand how to plan for retirement. I know it sounds like a late, but it shouldn't be. This is 30 years of your retirement, Michael. I'll get comments from people when I explain the process a little bit that are surprised that the classes are so long. And I sort of laugh at that because I know people who have spent more than eight hours planning a vacation for themselves. Well, this is planning the next 30 years of your life. You would think that people want to take more time than vacation planning time on how to map that out for themselves. So, Michael, how many hours have you guys spent planning for your wedding? (laughs) <laughs> more than eight hours right right so i mean you just think about anything that's important in your life and you got to know that your financial health is critical in retirement i think it's more critical than people appreciate i think that's the other takeaway today is the emotional relationship people are going to have with their money and how fear and i know people won't believe us but fear and anxiety is going to drive them to way underspend what they otherwise could spend in retirement if they use the general rules, these, this KISS mentality. KISS equals I'm going to spend less, enjoy retirement less, so it's going to require you to better understand and invest some time and train yourself to understand the traps, mistakes, and what are the solutions? How do I build a 30-year plan to protect myself, protect my surviving spouse, to protect my loved ones? So I don't outlive my money and I have the freedom I'm looking for in retirement. So register for one of our courses being taught at all the major universities. Tuition and donation. That's all you have to do is make a donation is $29 to attend. You get a 200 page textbook and we are streaming these live during COVID. So you could stay in your comfort safety of your own home. If that makes you feel more comfortable, you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Michael straight ahead. Always a pleasure to be alongside Kirk Cassidy, Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you'd like to sign up for the foundation's courses, and this is a deep dive into retirement planning. Believe me, in the 21st century, it takes a lot, a lot of planning to have that successful retirement. And it all starts at these courses. You can gain confidence by attending. And these are held locally at the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, or Oakland University. Call today to register 800 800- 240-8981. You can also go online to register at retirementplanningedu.com. Have you liked the foundation on Facebook yet? Well, if not, go to Facebook and search for Retirement Education Foundation so you can stay plugged in to all that they are doing to help you get to and through retirement successfully. Now, Kirk and Michael, we're talking about an old and still often used marketing strategy, and this is known as KISS. Keep it simple, stupid, right? So this is like Nike, just do it. And all those other very simple slogans we hear from big advertisers, big firms. And this is a way to sell people on products. Keep it simple. People will buy it. And we see this even in the financial services industry. You say planning for your finances, for your retirement, it's much more complicated than just a simple slogan, right? Tell me why this continues even to this day. It sounds like perhaps the financial service industry as a whole is maybe doing a bit of a disservice to the consumer. Well, I think anyone that's been a regular listener of the show would obviously have heard us repeat that many times at the fine why but let, let's cover it again so i think a great example i think paul highlighted was you just look at apple versus android Sam, android, any, any android model yeah and so 
Apple's done a, a, an amazing job of simplifying their messages, not having too many variances, and it makes it so much easier to sell, and, and they've been very effective, where Samsung hasn't been quite as effective. Some say, I know others will argue, I'm not trying to offend any Samsung lovers or Android lovers, but some will say it's a more complicated platform, a lot of different types of phones, a lot of different versions and variances. The messaging is more difficult to sell, right? And so at the end of the day, the financial service industry, the truth is, you know, 85 to 90% of the people in this business aren't bound by a fiduciary standard, meaning they don't have to do what's in your best interest. They don't have to disclose all fees and they don't have to disclose all conflicts of interest. They are bound by something called a suitability standard. And so therefore, the simpler something is, the more scalable it is. So if less options, easier to communicate, easier to sell. And at the end of the day, that, I mean, unfortunately, the financial service, it's just reality of anyone in business. They are in business to make money. So what we see is they hire very uh, skilled salespeople. They teach a simple solution, a one-size-fits-all solution that they can scale. It's transactional, right? They can meet a lot of people because they don't have to spend a lot of time planning. And they just sell, 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 repeat, 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 repeat. People buy it because they can understand it. It's simple. It's easily communicated. But at the end of the day, this is your money in your retirement. You, you, you need to appreciate, you've spent 30 to 40 years to accumulate and save this wealth. And while I will agree, Michael, it was simple to, to invest the money to accumulate the wealth, not simple to accumulate wealth. I know you all work very hard to have what you have, but if you invest, just bought the S&P 500, you won. I mean, it doesn't take much money. It doesn't take much sophistication to grow your money. And we talk about this in the first half of the class, really, the difference between accumulation and decumulation, spending. It's fairly simple, like you said, to pick the investments on the when you're accumulating on the way up. You just buy the index funds, don't look at it for 30 years, you're going to win over the long run. But when you start to decumulate, start to pull money out of the portfolio to spend, that's when you need a more customized solution than these simple rules. That Yeah, Michael, that's where the simple rules really get in trouble. But, but appreciate, because people come to the class all the time, and they spend eight hours in the class, and they say to us, this is, this is so logical. Why isn't anyone else talking or talking about this or doing this kind of planning and explaining this? And it's because, A, it's complicated. Each one of you have different types of money. Some of you have pensions. Some have two household incomes, two uh, Social Securities. Some some of you have more taxable money. Some of you have more tax deferred money. Some of you are single, married. There's an age difference between the husband and the wife. So all of those variables requires a different type of plan. That is not a scalable business model. In our private practice, it takes us 30 to 50 hours to construct a retirement plan for every one of our clients because everyone is individualized and customized. There's no simple solution. And so that is not a profitable business model for our financial service industry. It is not scalable. It's not transactional. So therefore, what they do is they come up with the most simple generic rules that can fit the average retiree, right? And, and, but they never define what the average retiree is. And we talked about, so the average retiree is roughly $200,000. So if, like you said earlier, if, you, if, if you're in that bucket, then maybe the 4% rule might work for you. But if you have more resources than that, there are much better ways to go about this. You can spend 6, 7, 8, 9% per year in retirement without the fear of outliving your money. It, it, right. If you understand how to manage tax brackets, if you understand when to take income from which accounts, if you're understanding the risk of called something called sequence of return risk. Otherwise, go ahead and take your 4%. I, I would encourage all of you to run your own scenarios, taking 4% a year through your 60s once you retire. But then fast forward to when you're 72 years old and you have to take your Social Security and you have to take your RMDs, which you're going to quickly realize it's not 4%. What you're going to realize is you have, you're going to be receiving a lot more income in your 70s than you were taking in your 60s. Because you follow the general rule. I think we come back and cover this because I think this is, this is a way we can shake people to wake up and stop falling for these simple rules. You're underliving what you could otherwise be spending 
if you it, it comes back to and it's the reason why the retirement education foundation it's a charity that was founded 10 years ago because of this reason look a lot of people who are listening to our shows and come to our class have more than $200,000 saved for retirement. They need some training, some coaching. They need some education on how to construct a retirement plan so they can maximize their retirement and enjoy the retirement they've earned. So I'd encourage you to register for one of our eight-hour courses. We're teaching them at all the major universities right now. We're also streaming it so you can stay home during COVID. You get a 200-page textbook. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. And we will be back with Kurt Cassidy, Michael Mazarin in just a moment. Great to be here with Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And of course, the foundation teaches courses throughout the year at local universities. This is a great way for you to get in the know, to be up to date on the latest strategies, tips, and ways to plan for a modern retirement. And it's very easy to get registered. You can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. And the courses are taught conveniently for you all around the community, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, or Oakland University. So register today. We're talking about some rules of thumb that are just completely outdated when you think about retirement planning and modern retirements. Michael Kirk, what are some of these outdated rules of thumb? So again, with the whole concept of trying to keep it simple, the first one that I think of is the 4% rule. I know we talk about this frequently on this radio show. Everything that's wrong with the 4% rule. But in, in here's one thing I would encourage everyone to do. If you don't know what the 4% rule is, I'm going to encourage you to go to our website, the re, uh, retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, and you'll find a white paper. You'll find a lot of white papers about general rules and where the traps are, and you'll find some interactive calculators there. We have one specifically on the 4% rule explaining what it is and why it's, it, it's not going to work today. And it, again, complicated. It's the reason why our courses are eight hours. And please don't let eight hours scare you. It requires some training. You have wealth. You have saved 30 years, 40 years of your life, this money, and you need to make it last for 30, 40 years. If in, investing eight hours is not unreasonable to better understand where you're, you're either going to make a mistake, outlive your money, or underlive your money. This is what I'm really concerned with. Michael, I think of the 4% rule. And I think, what a shame for a lot of people. I mean, people who, maybe if you're the average retire with $200,000, fine. Take 4% because that's probably all you should be taking. But if you've got a million dollars saved or a couple million dollars, taking 4% is insane. What, you've got a million dollars, so all you're going to take out of that is $40,000 a year? Until you hit RMDs and Social Security. And then all of a sudden, now you're in your 70s and 80s, and you go from living on $40,000 a year to your RMDs plus Social Security on top of that? I love it. Let's do it. Let's do the math. And I I encourage everyone to do this at home. I want you to do a spreadsheet. Take your million dollars. Say you retire at 65. Take 4% a year out until you turn 70 when RMDs, when you turn on your Social Security, if you're going to wait until 70. So you're going to take $40,000 a year. Now you're going to kick your Social Security on at 70. So if you both were working and you both have Social Security, let's call it $60,000, 60000 70000 more. So now you've got $100,000 a year. Now let's turn 72, and you had a million dollars in your 401k. Remember, a million dollars saved. Now let's, in fact, go a little further. Let's go to 75. Now you have to take another $50,000 out of your IRA. So now you're in your mid-70s, and you have to take 50 in RMDs. You have to take your Social Security of another, call it 60000 and then you take your 4%... So where are we at, Michael? I mean, you're getting close to $200,000 a year. $150,000, $200,000 a year. And you were 
scrounging when you were your healthiest? You were living on $40,000, $50,000 a year when you were your most healthy, most active, when you could actually enjoy the money. Instead, you waited until you're 75 to have $150,000 to $200,000 a year. It's backwards, Michael. It's totally backwards. Why does the industry use this 4% rule and then tell you to protect your principal? Well, a couple of reasons. First, it's their lazy way of making you regulate yourself. They know that if you're withdrawing 4% per year, you're likely not going to outlive your money. And they can do that without building a plan for you. Right. It's simple. They just run it through a, a software system called Monte Carlo that tells you the likelihood of whether you're going to outlive your money or not at 4% over your lifetime. And it's not just, so I, I think I jumped the gun earlier talking about the Vanguard study. I When Vanguard put this piece out, I was excited because I think Vanguard's a great company for the most part. They're very investor focused. Uh, they did a, a research study on how to manage your income withdrawal percentages. So I was reading through it and it's really just a fancy version of the 4% rule that they adjust up or down when the market is up or down. So I have two problems with that. One, it's still the 4% rule just dressed up to be fancier. Two, now they're asking retirees to check the market, to plan their expenses. So now you're asking someone who is 65 and retired to check the stock market before they book a vacation or before they go out to eat that night. It's, it's insanity. So the result is, Michael, and look, we have been teaching these classes for over 10 years, taught thousands and thousands of people in our private practice. We're responsible for over a billion dollars, almost a thousand clients. We have all the data. We know how you're going to behave, when you're going to behave, your spending patterns, how you react to markets. And here's the sad part. Most of you, I don't care if you have a million, two million, five million dollars saved for retirement. Most all of you are going to allow short term market events to drive your spending decisions in retirement. You're going to put off going on vacation. You're going to put off home improvements. You're going to spend less during times of volatility, which is totally avoidable if you just had a plan knowing, look, how many recessions will you experience through your retirement? We have them on every, between five to seven years. We're going to have an election every four years. We're going to have market events well, every three to five years. That's going to happen in retirement. That's a fact that's going to happen in retirement. So if you know that's going to happen and you can construct a plan where you can pivot to the right accounts during times of market volatility, well, you can take not 4%, you could take 6 7 8% out per year without outliving your money if you just manage what accounts you're taking the money from in what year. Don't let short-term market events drive your spending decisions in retirement. That 4% rule is lazy. It's for the person with $200,000. Protect your principal. So you're telling me you retire with $3 million, Michael. Do you think most people want $3 million to go to their kids when they die? That most people don't. Most people want to spend some of that principal down, but that requires more detailed planning than just take 4% and call it a day. Right. If I tell you just protect your principal, do I have to plan or are you going to self-regulate and just spend less? It's crazy. That's insane. Look, if legacy is important to you, fine. There are strategies we talk about in the class to create that legacy without it compromising your retirement. A controlled spend down your principal is fine as long as you know where and when to take income from the right sources and you're minimizing taxes and protecting the surviving spouse. It requires training. That's why it's an eight-hour class. That's why it's a 200-page textbook. That's why we have executives, CEOs, CFOs, CPAs attending these courses at all the major universities. There's, we're streaming it even during COVID, so no excuse. You can stay at your home and we'll still stream it to you. All we ask for is you to make a donation of $29 and you can attend this course. All you have to do is register at retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. You're listening to the Retirement Education Hour. It's great to be here with Kurt Cassidy and Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. If you'd like to attend one of their courses, these are held throughout the year. You can find a location and a day that works great for you. And they're taught locally at universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. Call today to get registered 800-240-8981. Here's that number again. It's 800-240-8981. Or go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. Well, we all know simple cells, right? 
I mean, some of the biggest, most successful companies have been using those simple selling strategies for years. But Kirk and Michael say this isn't the best news when it comes to financial services. That industry is actually possibly doing you a disservice. There's a lot more to proper retirement planning than just a slogan or selling something quickly. And there are some very simple strategies that are still being used to try to sell people on on products or maybe solutions they don't even need. Kirk and Michael, let's continue the conversation. What else should we be aware of? Well, I think one of the the, the, the most common KISS strategies still being used, and I, I, I want to be clear, I will promise you keeping it simple stupid for someone who has more than $200,000 saved for retirement is doing them a disservice. I, I, I That's not... I don't think, I know that you are way under living what you could be. You're going to take risks you don't need to take. You could have a better outcome. I know that factually, it just takes time, energy, and a little bit of focus and work. And it's not the most profitable business model. And so a great example right now, and they're all scrambling because they don't know what to do, is the 60-40 rule, Michael. Will you explain this 60-40 rule and why everyone's scrambling? So the 60-40 rule has been along, been around for a long time. It's the idea that if you have 60% of your portfolio in stocks and 40% in bonds, you should be able to weather any market event and have enough of a return to provide for your 4% rule that we just spent some time talking about. The issue is that with yields at or near all-time lows, that 40% piece, the bond piece, is no longer going to hedge stock risk and also will have very low returns. I mean, we're taught, we've are taught we seen projections from the, all the major banks, Goldman Sachs, Citi, JP Morgan, saying that the 60-40 portfolio over the next 10 years is going to average close to 3 or 3.5%. Three the Michael, historical average yeah, is about I was say, six, what's the average? 6.5%. So it'll receive about half of its historical return. So they're still using rules, and I'll tell you their, their solution because they're starting to pivot now. The whole industry is starting to pivot away from this 60-40 rule. So, Michael, one more thing. The 40% bonds, you called it yield. The easy way for some people to understand, that's just interest rates. We know interest rates are all-time lows, and so your bonds are way underperforming historical averages. That's part of the reason why this isn't going to work. The other problem is people are going to struggle to believe me and understand this, but we'll show you the data. Bonds and stocks, equities, are going through the same type of volatility at the same periods of time. So when the stocks are down, bonds are down. When stocks are up, bonds are up. That has historically not been the case over the last 30 years. And so this is very problematic. And and why you're going to probably Google after the show, and I would encourage you, is you know, is the 60-40 rule dead? And you're going to see a lot of articles about this. And what the industry, financial service industry is doing to adjust for this low projected return over the next 10 years is encourage retirees to take on more risk. They're now saying the 75-25 rule, taking 75% of your money putting in stocks, 25% of your money putting in bonds. The theory is the projected forecast over the next 10 years is significantly greater than 60-40 because we have that fewer percentage of your money in bonds. So it should produce a better return. What's the problem with that, Michael? It will produce a better return, no question. It will, but the problem with that is now these are retirees living on this income, living on the income they're pulling from their portfolios. So a 75-25 portfolio is going to have much more risk in it during volatility events. So we know during the 2020 COVID crash, a portfolio of 75-25 probably fell about 28-29%, I'm guessing. Well, well I, I won't guess. Do you know how much a 75%, 25% portfolio fell in 2008? About, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess 43%. It is 43%. They lost, that's what, so you're asking a 70, 75, 80-year-old person to not panic when the market's down 43%. That's a f- the first mistake and, and bad assumption because you will panic. I know you you baby boomers are really proud. You didn't panic during 2008. We know. You weren't retired. Someone else was paying you a paycheck every day. That's why you didn't panic. When you're 75 years old and your portfolio goes down 40%, you're going to panic. Well, 35% of baby boomers panicked during COVID in March, right? So 
your relationship with money is going to change. You're, you're, you're going to have trouble connecting the dots. You're going to have more anxiety. You're going to be fearful out living your money. That's why you, most people underspend what they could spend because they're using these stupid general rules, right? So, so one more point to this, Michael. One variable is they are going to have struggle managing the anxiety of more volatility in a 75-25. The second problem is your average rate of return in retirement isn't what's going to drive your performance and success. It's not. I know you're going to struggle to understand this. I'm going to tell you to go to our website again and look for our white paper on sequence of return risks or use our interactive calculator. It is the sequence of when you take money out of your portfolios and the por- perfor- portfolios performance that's going to drive your performance in retirement. If you make the mistake of taking withdrawals out of accounts, portfolios that are volatile and down, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75% if you do that early in retirement. The secret to performance in retirement isn't the investments. And I think we should talk about that next segment. It's not the investments. It's when you take money out of which investments. It is hard to quantify and explain over the phone, over the radio. This is why you got to spend eight hours. This is your entire future of your financial future. You've worked your whole, you've how many out 2,500 hours a year you spend working. And it, you've done it for 30 to 40 years. I'm asking you to invest. I'm begging you to invest eight hours in your own retirement. I don't care if you're sophisticated, you're very involved, or you just let somebody else do it for you. Spend this eight hours so you understand the mistakes, the solutions, and how to give you the retirement you want. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity, and you can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Michael right after this. This is the Retirement Education Hour. We're so glad you've tuned in today. Megan Mozak alongside Kirk Cassidy, Michael Mazarin. They are financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation. And if you're following the foundation on Facebook, number one, we thank you. Uh, It's a great way to stay up to date on everything that they're doing. You'll know that the foundation hosts courses throughout the year and you can get registered to attend. You can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. Again, retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call the phone number 800 240 81. We know simple sells, and we've been talking about that. The financial services industry uses typically a very simple approach to try to get people to buy products, to work with them. Kirk and Michael say that's actually not the best approach to take. A lot of times, planning for retirement, it can be a bit complicated. It can be more involved. However, (laughs) Michael and Kirk, you say there is one area of retirement planning that is actually quite simple. So what is it? So I think people will be surprised to hear this because your entire lives, you have been conditioned to believe that different money managers, investment managers, advisors, financial uh, uh, portfolio managers, that there is some degree of difference between being good or bad, or someone has an algorithm or a strategy or a secret sauce that's going to produce a better outcome. I'm here to tell you, we believe strongly, and so does academia believes this. This isn't something we're just making up. The data doesn't support that concept. The fact is, is we believe you've been lied to. We've been, you've been conditioned because it's really not that hard. The easiest part of retirement planning literally is choosing the investments, but yet it's what you all will focus all of your time worrying about. It's what the advisor's will convince you is the most important part. It's the least important difficult, let me rephrase, it may not be the least important part, but it's the easiest part. It's not that hard to invest your money, particularly in retirement. The challenge is, what accounts do I take the income from when? That is the tough part. It's the income planning. The investing is easy. I I mean, you just buy an index fund over the last 30 years, you've performed almost at 10%. I'm promising you none of you over the last 30 years have been performing at 10% unless that's what you did. 
there isn't a mutual fund manager out there that's performed at 10% over the last 30 years. In fact, they're performing at 3.98% as a group on average over the last 30 years. They've way underperformed just buying an index. It's not that complicated. And that's the ironic piece here is they spend all of this money to convince people on advertising, this, to, to convince people that investing is rocket science. With all, I mean, You can watch the financial news, whatever channel you prefer, and they talk all day long about the different companies and the revenues, profit sharing, all these different aspects. And really, it's as simple as buying the index fund, owning all of the companies, and not trying to pick winners and losers and not trying to market time. Look, you missed thirty of the last uh, thirty of the best days over the last twenty years. You have a negative return over that twenty-year period. That's the number. If you bought the S and P five hundred, what is it now? About nine percent, roughly, over the last twenty years. So just missed thirty of the best days, and you have a negative return. And the best days typically come around the same time as the worst days. I mean, we saw it that sure again is. back in March of twenty twenty. We had literally. 10% down days right next to 10% up days. And if you think you can pick and choose when it's going to be down or up on those massive volatility days, you're kidding yourself. That, that's the other part. I, I love the the chart that you came up with the other day, Michael, that I think we did for our our rundown. We have a TV show we, we produce for our clients in our private practice. And Michael came up with a chart showing how the markets react after a recession or major market event. And those are the best months in market history always concludes after 2008 event, after COVID event, after the 2000 event, I mean, 87 event. You go back, well, look the, at history. The 50 days after the, the COVID crash were the best 50-day period in market history. So if someone got out, sold during COVID because they were too, nerv too nervous, and they thought to themselves, I'll get back in when things settle down or when there's a vaccine. They're still waiting. They miss the best 50 days to invest. Yeah, they're probably still not back in. I, I, I guess that's what we typically see because they've been waiting for that pullback again. And now they missed it. And now they're waiting for the second crash because they can't stomach the idea of they, they missed this whole run up. And if they just stayed in, they'd be way ahead. That's all you had to do. It's kind of like everyone that was calling the bottoms during uh, uh, 1995, 96, 97. If they just held on through 2000, they would have won. The, the, the opportunity loss between 95 and 2000 was m significantly greater than the loss during 2000.com. So the easiest part, what you can keep simple, is the investing part. The investing. You should own, in our humble opinion, stocks, bonds, ETFs, index funds. That's it. No mutual funds. Don't need them. You have too much wealth. That's an entry-level investment. No one has a secret sauce. Look, 40% of all mutual funds fail after 10 years. That's the number. There is not a mutual fund manager that stayed in the top 25 percentile, quartile, over a five-year period consistently ever in history. It's never happened over a five-year period. I mean, you could have a globally diversified portfolio in as little as four ETFs. It really is not with... with ETFs and index funds the way they are today, the access we have today, it's really not that difficult. It, oh, it's not. Sorry. I was thinking we were running out of time. Here I am. I'm, we're not. You're right. It's not that difficult. Now, here's where the complication comes in. And this is what we're going to talk about next segment is the planning piece. When do I take money from which portfolios? Almost think of buckets. I know everyone uses buckets, but just think of multiple different buckets of accounts, some with more risk, some with no risk, some with moderate risk. And it's really determined based upon when you're going to need the cash. And if we have a correction, a market event, do I have a place that's not exposed to market risk or very, very, very low market risk to pull my income from? That's going to drive, if you run projections, we'll show in the class all kinds of scenarios where people have the same average rate of return over 20 years. But if you took money from the wrong account, you run out of money. If you take money from the right account, you have millions at the end. It's all about when you take the money out, not the performance of the investments. People are lost. They're obsessed with the performance of the investments instead of understanding the income planning, the tax planning. It's the most critical piece of this. And, and why 10 years ago we started this. We started this, this charity to teach these courses we teach financial literacy for, for, uh, for high school students and well, and the charity does some other things. But for the purposes of today, we are teaching these, these courses, advanced courses at all the major universities right now. And we're streaming it because of COVID so you can stay in the comforts of your home. It's eight hours. 
It's a 200 page textbook. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can register at retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Michael straight ahead. Here with Kurt Cassidy, Michael Mazarin, they are both financial instructors with the Retirement Education Foundation, and we want you to get educated. We want you to be armed with all the information you need to have a successful retirement here in the 21st century. And to do that, the Retirement Education Foundation hosts courses all throughout the year, making it very easy, very convenient for you to gain this knowledge so that you can launch into your ideal retirement. To get registered, you can go to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. Again, that's retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. Keep in mind, these are local courses, so they're taught at University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, Oakland University as well. And if you'd like a virtual option, you can find out more at the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.com. Now, Kirk and Michael, we've been talking about different selling strategies that the financial services industry uses. Not always especially helpful, can be effective, but doesn't mean it's great for consumers. At the end of the day, everyone wants a successful retirement. What does that all boil down to? Two things. The secret to an effective retirement plan, uh, let me rephrase. I kind of gave one, I kind of gave it away, didn't I? The secret to retirement and having the freedom to spend what you can spend without being worried all the time starts with education. So before you do anything, hire anyone, buy anything, first educate train, spend eight hours in a class, educate yourself. Second, plan, a plan. And that's what's being taught in the class is how do you construct a retirement plan to give you the outcomes you want? Michael brought something up in the, in the break when we were talking off air, he, he said, you know, we've got to cover risk tolerance because there's these general rules of how much risk you should have based upon your age and your net worth. That is insane. Okay. Stop following these general rules, especially around how much risk you should take. I'll quote Warren Buffett. You have to be insane to risk what you have for something you don't need. In other words, if you have what you need to give you what you want in retirement, then you should modify your risk accordingly. If you already won the marathon, why are you going to go back and do the last 10 miles so you can break the world record? Well, you could have a hamstring injury, tear up a knee, have a foot injury, Why are we taking risks that we don't otherwise need to take if we have enough? But the only way to know if you have enough is to be able to understand how to construct the plan to know where the traps are, Michael. And I always think about, so we met with someone who came to the class who retired about 20 years ago, actually, uh, around 2000, who told us he was taking way more risk than he needed in hindsight and got wiped out in the 2000 crash. Then he was still taking more risk to try and get it all back and was, was wiped out again in 07, 08. So this person who had no plan was taking more risk than he needed, which he, did, he didn't realize at the time, he does now in hindsight, and wiped out two different times. Can I tell you, Michael, the majority of the people that come to our class, right? So our, the average net worth of people who attend our class are, are over a million dollars. You know, they have five years post high school education, four to five years post high school. These are very educated, sophisticated people that have some resources. And it, I'm telling you that most people are underspending what they could spend and taking more risk than they need to give them what they want. But they had no clue and they don't understand. And that's why I would encourage you to read the sequence of return, a white paper that's on our website, that the first five years are the most critical years in retirement. If we have a market event in the first five years, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%. That's because we're taking more risk than we need, or we're taking money out of the wrong accounts when we have volatility. And not, we're not telling you to take less risk just to take less risk. We're telling you to set yourself up for success. And there's two variables to determine how much risk you should take. What do I need to give me what I want? And the only way to know that is through education and a plan, and a plan that takes 30 to 50 hours to build, not uh, the next 10 callers gets a free roadmap every week. H- how much planning can be done? You know, when they got three or four employees that work from, come on, it takes time, education, taxes, a lot of sophistication. 
You can't just do this based upon reading Money Magazine. And that's what I think people sometimes come to the class with the expectation that we're going to tell them 70-30 is better than 60-40. And that's just not the case. We can't tell anybody what their allocation should be. They need to build a plan for themselves to quantify how close am I? Do I have enough? If I do, let's tone the risk back because I don't need to take that risk anymore. Now, if you say to me, I want to take more risk so I can leave more money, wealth to my children, again, we talk about solutions for that in the class so that you don't compromise and put your own retirement at peril. So the second variable, Michael, is then your tolerance, your emotional tolerance. And I don't know that people can appreciate until they get into retirement what that vulnerability is and that relationship with money. It's going to change. And so you need to make sure when you construct a plan to not set yourself up for failure. I can tell you in our private practice, and I try to, we try not to talk about our private practice too much, but I can tell you not one person in our private practice panicked during COVID. Not one person changed their plans for home improvements or if they were selling their house or if they were going to retire that summer. Not one person changed any of their predetermined plans because of what was going on in the market because they knew they had what they needed to their portfolio never exceeded their max tolerance for loss. A well-constructed retirement plan can build it so that it never exceeds a certain amount of loss during a market event so that you don't panic and make a bad decision because that is the worst decision is to panic. You've got to eliminate that emotional relationship with your money to be successful, successful in managing your money. And this is why we're going to encourage you again you got to come and, and train. You've got to educate yourself. Invest eight hours of your time. Attend one of our eight-hour courses in at all the major universities. University of Michigan, Michigan State, Eastern Michigan, Univers um, Oakland University. We're streaming it live through Zoom So that because of COVID. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity. That's it. You get eight hours of our education and 200-page textbook. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org or call 800-240-8981. Investment advisory services are offered by Strategic Investment Advisors, Inc., an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any insurance discussed in this show is backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during this show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.